All right, everybody, welcome to Math with Grace. Today we're going to be looking at Algebra Unit 7, Lessons 1 through 5. Lesson 1 begins on page 2, and it's solving systems of equations by multiplication and ad addition. Last week, or maybe the week before, we did solving system of equations by addition elimination, right? Well, sometimes, if we look see here, it doesn't always work out that we can just eliminate something that we can just add and eliminate, right? Our coefficients here aren't the same. So to solve equations when the coefficients are not opposites or cannot be made opposite requires multiplying either one equation or both by a factor that make the coefficients opposite. So in this example here, we have 3x minus 4y equals negative 37 and x plus 2y equals 1. So what they're doing here is we have a four, negative 4y and a 2y. So they're taking this equation with the 2y and they're multiplying the entire equation, meaning every single term, by 2. Okay, if you multiply every single term, the equation is still consistent. It's still considered to be the same, and so we can do that. And so we end up with 2x plus 4y equals 2. And once we're at that state, now we can do our addition elimination, right? We're at the state where we can add and eliminate, solving for one of the variables, in this case, x. i got to slide my paper up here. And then taking that x and putting it back in, and in this case, they put it back into this original equation, okay? And then solve for the y. And then they got the point where these two lines intersect, okay? Looking at page three, it says when one of the coefficients is not a multiple of the other, like the case here where two y was a multiple, we could just simply multiply it to get the four. Um, sometimes we have to multiply both equations by a different number. So here we have 2x minus 3y equals negative 11 and 3x plus 4y equals 9. So neither of these could we just multiply one of them to achieve the other, right? It just doesn't work out. But if they multiply, they're going to try to get their y's to be the same. You could choose the x's. It really doesn't matter. And if you look down here, it says, it, that's what it says. It doesn't matter whether you choose for the x or the y you're going to get the same. So if you wanted to choose the x's and multiply this one by a 3 and multiply this one by, let's say, a negative 2 so that they both come up to 6, that would work too. But what they chose to do was multiply the first equation, so equation A is how they have it labeled, by 4. Okay, And they did that because this y is already negative and this y is already positive. That's why they chose the y's. So they're not having to multiply by a negative. But they multiplied this one by 4, and so it ended up to look like this. Then they had to multiply their b, though, by 3 to get that 12y. So now we have a negative in the a, a negative 12y, and in the b we have a positive 12y. So now we can use those multiplied equations for our addition elimination, again solving for one variable, substituting back into an original equation, and solving for the other. Okay. At the bottom of the page here, it states that any of the methods that we've learned can be used to solve these systems of equations. So we could substitute, we can add and eliminate, we can multiply and addition eliminate, okay? All of these can be used. You will come up with the same, you should come up with the same answer no matter what. It's just that through practice, some of these are going to be easier than others. So looking at example two, if we chose the substitution method, it would probably be a little bit more challenging because we'd be dealing with fractions, right? Because we'd have to take one of these equations and solve for one variable. Say we took this one and solve for x, right? We'd have a lot of fractions, and so that would make it a little bit more complicated. Obviously, we can't easily just straight up addition um, solve this, right? Addition wouldn't work necessarily. So we have to do this multiplication, addition, and then uh, cancellation method. So let's turn the page. Now they have one more example here on page four, and that's because in this example, 
the everything, all of the variables in the original equations were positive, so they had to take one and multiply it by a negative number to get that opposite sign, just like we did before when we multiplied by a negative one and we changed the sign of every term, right? Well, this is very similar to that, except it's not just a negative one. In this case, it was a negative two, but we still had to watch our sign. Negative two times a positive, give me a negative. A negative two times a positive, give me a negative. Negative two times positive, give me my negative. So every sign was switched because of that negative, okay? All right, let's take a look at some of these problems because the best way to learn sometimes is just to do them. Number one, three X minus Y equals 29. 4x minus 5y equals 46. So I'm going to take my first equation here and I'm going to multiply it by negative 5. Because here I have a negative 5y. Here I do not. This By choosing that equation, I don't have to multiply both. Because to get these x's to be like numbers, to be equal numbers, I would have to multiply both equations. By choosing this one here, I only have to multiply one, but I do have to multiply it by a negative five. So negative five times three X is a negative 15 X. Negative five times a negative Y gives me a positive five Y. And then negative five times 29 is a negative 145. All right, so this, remember, if you want to label these A and B, this was my A. Okay, now I'm going to put my B down here and we're going to do addition elimination, right? So my B is, oh, this was supposed to be X. So my B is 4X minus 5Y equals 46. Now I can addition eliminate, right? Because 5Y minus 5Y is 0. So I end up with negative 15X plus 4X, which is going to give me a negative 11X is equal to negative 45 plus 46, which is a negative 99, right? 45, I'm one more than that, so I'm at negative 99. Negative 11 is being multiplied by x. We're going to do the opposite and divide. And we end up with x is equal to a negative divided by a negative, so I know my answer is going to be positive, and that's a positive 9, okay? So I'm going to put my parentheses right here, and I know my x is a 9, now I need to substitute this back in to solve for here. So I'm going to choose my B equation, because why not? And so I get 4 times X, or 4 times 9, minus 5Y is equal to 46, okay? 4 times 9 is 36, minus 5Y is equal to 46. I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. It's a positive 36, so we're doing the opposite and subtracting. And I'm left with negative 5y is equal to 10. Negative 5 is being multiplied by y. We're going to do the opposite and divide. And we find out that y is divided is 10 divided by negative 5 or a negative 2. So my ordered pair is 9 comma negative 2. All right, let's take a look at number 2. We have 3x minus 8y equals 65 and 2x minus y equals 13. Now again, if I wanted to work with my x's, I would have to multiply both equations. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to get my parentheses set up here for number two. And this is my a and this is my b, right? So I'm going to multiply my b times what? I'm going to multiply it by a negative 8, right? So negative 8 times 2x minus y equals 13. Negative 8 times 2x is a negative 16x. Negative 8 times a negative y is a positive 8y. Remember, this is my b. And negative 8 times 13 will be 104, negative 104, okay? Now my b is ready. I'm going to put my a here as well. 3x minus 8y equals 65. Now I have my y's are the same opposite terms, right? 8y minus 8y is 0. They're gone. Negative 16x plus 3x gives me a negative 13x is going to be equal to 104 minus 65. Sorry, it's negative 104 plus 65. Let's get that right because we want a negative 39 to be our answer. Negative 13 is being multiplied by x. We're going to do the opposite and divide. 
Negative divided by negative is a positive, and 39 divided by 13 is 3. Okay? So, the x part of this equation is 3. Now we need to substitute that back in. I'm going to choose the b, original b, right? I mean, I don't know. It really doesn't matter. But I have 2 times x. x is 3, so 2 times 3 minus y equals 13. That's why I picked this one, because my y is already... Uh, a, has a coefficient of 1, so that would, to me, is the easiest one. 2 times 3 is 6, minus y equals 13. 6 is positive. We're going to do the opposite and subtract it from both sides. We have negative y is equal to 13 minus 6, or 7. Now, I can't have a negative y as my answer. I need a positive y. So we're just going to flip the sign on both of these, and I get y equals a negative 7. Positive y equals a negative 7. So my negative 7 comes up here, and that's my answer for number 2, 3 comma negative 7. Looking at number 3, here's my a, here's my b, right? I've got 2x plus 3y equals 23, and 4x minus 5y equals 35. Now my 2x and my 4x are pretty close, right? If I multiply a by 2, then they will be the same, but I need it to be opposite, so I actually need to multiply by my a by a negative 2. So negative 2 times 2x plus 3y equals 23 will give me negative 2 times 2x is a negative 4x. Negative 2 times 3y gives me a negative 6y. Negative 2 times 23 gives me a negative 46. Okay, now I can do the addition, sorry, elimination with my b. My b is 4x minus 5y equals 35, okay? Negative 4x plus 4x, those are gone. Negative 6y minus 5y is a negative 11y. Negative 11y is going to be equal to 46 minus 35, or 11, or sorry, negative 11, negative 46 plus 35, negative 11. Negative 11 is being multiplied by y. We're going to do the opposite and divide. And y is going to equal a negative 11 over a negative 11, which is basically a positive 1. So we have our first part of our ordered pair, right? Now we need to substitute this back in. Well, let's substitute it back into a. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. So we have 2x. I hate how my paper is wrinkled here, plus 3 times y, or 3 times 1, equals 23, right? So I have 2x plus 3 equals 23. So I'm going to subtract, 3 is positive, so we're going to do the opposite and subtract it from both sides, and we get 2x is equal to 20. 2 is being multiplied by x, we're going to do the opposite and divide, and we get x is equal to 20 divided by 2, or 10. So our ordered pair solution for this system of equations is 10 comma 1. Let's take a look at a couple at the top of this next page here. So we're at the top of page 5. Number 4, 2x minus 3y equals 19 and 5x plus 7y equals negative 25. Now here there isn't one that we can choose over the other, right? We're going to have to multiply both equations by something. So I'm going to do my a equation here, and let's solve for the x, right? So the common, the common factor that they have, or not factor, but um, the greatest common factor, I guess, is what we're going to talk about, or the lowest common factor, would be 10. Anyway, 2 times 5 is 10. You can choose the largest one, which is the 5. 2 does not go into 5, but if you double 5 and make it 10, then we know 2 goes into 10, right? So 10 is our number that we're looking to reach. To get this 2x to be a 10x, we have to multiply it by 5. Okay, for my b, to get my 5x to be a 10x, we have to multiply it by 2. So plus 7y equals negative 25. I'm trying to condense as much as possible here. So for my a, I have 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times a negative 3y gives me a negative 15y. 
and 5 times 19 is 95. Okay? For my B, here's my A, this is my B. I have 2 times 5x, so again, 10x. Oh, I need one to be positive and one to, let's make this a negative two because we need one to be negative. So negative 10x, negative two times seven y gives me a negative 14y and negative two times negative 25, negative times negative is positive. So it's positive 50. Now let's stack them. So I'm going to stack my B over here. Negative 10x minus 14y equals 50. Okay, so here's my B. And now I have positive 10x minus 10x, so they become a zero. Negative 15 minus four, negative 15y minus 14y gives me a negative 29y is going to be equal 95 plus 50, which is 145. Okay? Negative 29 is being multiplied by y. We're going to do the opposite and divide. So positive divided by a negative tells us our answer is going to be negative, and it's going to be a negative 5. 145 divided by 29, negative 5, okay? There's my first part. My y is a negative 5. Now I need to substitute that back in, right? I'm going to substitute it back into my a. And when I do that, I get 2x is or minus 3 times y, or 3 times a negative 5, is equal to 19. So I have 2x, negative 3 times negative 5 is a positive 15, is going to be 19, right? 15 is positive, we're going to do the opposite and subtract. I'm going to slide it over here. So we're left with 2x is equal to 19 minus 15, or 4. So 2 is being multiplied by x, we're going to do the opposite and divide, and x is going to equal 2. Okay, so our coordinate point for that system of equation is 2 comma 5. Let's take a look at number 5. Okay, we have 2x minus 3y equals 3 and 5x plus 4y equals 42. Now we could do the same thing we did here since we have a 2x and a 5x again. We could multiply the first one by 5 and the second one by 2, but I'm going to go and do the y's instead just to mix it up a little. So my 3 and my 4, obviously 3 does not go into 4 evenly. 2 4s is 8. 3 does not go into 8 evenly. 3 4s is 12. 3 does go into 12 evenly. So that's what we're going to use. Here's my A. Here's my B. We're, we're trying to hit 12. So for my A, to make this Y a 12, I have to multiply by 4. So I'm going to multiply the entire equation, meaning each term, by 4. For B, to get this 4y, I don't know why I put a parenthesis right there, to get this 4y to be a 12, I have to multiply it by 3. So I'm going to be multiplying the entire equation, meaning every term in the equation, by 3. So A, 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times a negative 3y gives me a negative 12y. 4 times 3 is 12. For my b, 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times 4y is a 12y. And 3 times 42 is what? That's a 6, 126. Okay? Now we're ready to combine it, so I'm going to slide my b over here. And so it's a 15x plus 12y equals 126. Okay, here's my equation for my addition elimination. I have a negative 12y plus 12y, so they're gone. I have an 8x plus 15x gives me 23x's is equal to 12 plus 126, which is what? 138. Okay, 23 is being multiplied by x. We're going to do the opposite and divide. And we see that x is equal to 6. Okay, so we have the first part of our ordered pair. Now we need to substitute that back in. It doesn't matter where. I'm going to choose the A just because it's going to be a smaller number than 5 times 6. You know, 2 times 6 is smaller. So I'm going to choose the A. So I have 2 times X or 2 times 6 minus 3Y equals 3. 
2 times 6 is 12, minus 3y equals 3. 12 is positive, so we're going to do the opposite and subtract. So I'm going to subtract 12y, or 12 from both sides, okay? And I'm going to write my answer up here. So my negative 3y is equal to 3 minus 12, which is a negative 9. Negative 3 is being multiplied by y. We're going to do the opposite and divide. And y equals negative 9 divided by negative 3, so it's a positive 3. So my coordinate point is at 6, 3. Okay, last one. I'm doing all of these with you just because I want to make sure you understand the concept of what we're working on here. 2x plus 7y equals negative or equals 79, and 3x minus 4y equals four, negative 41. Now, the y's are already opposite signs, right? One's positive, one negative, but these are pretty big numbers, so I don't really want to do that one. So I'm going to stick with the x portion because I have a 2 and a 3, right? So if I double my 3, I get 6. They both go into 6 evenly, so that's what I'm looking for. Here's my a, here's my b. So for my a, how do I get this 2x to be a 6x? Well, I have to multiply the whole thing by 3, right? Plus 7y equals 79. Sorry, I'm writing small, but it's a lot to fit in. If you have scratch paper, it's probably better to do it on scratch paper. Now for my b equation, how am I going to get this 3x to be a 6x? Well, I need to multiply everything here by a negative 2 because we need that negative 6. So... 3x minus 4y equals negative 41. And it works out because then I get rid of these negatives here. So anyway, A. 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 7y gives me a positive 21y. And 3 times 79 is 237. For my B, that's a tight squeeze here, negative 2 times 3x is a negative 6x. Negative 2 times negative 4y gives me a positive 8y. And negative 2 times a negative 41, okay, gives me a positive 82. Now that I have the same coefficient but opposite signs, I can bring them together, right? So I've got negative 6x plus 8y equals 82. 6x minus 6x, those are eliminated. 21y plus 8y is 29y. 237 plus 82, well, 7 and 2 is 9. 3 and 8 is 11. You carry the 319, okay? 29 is being multiplied by y. We're going to do the opposite and divide. And we see that y is equal to 11, okay? 319 divided by 29 is 11. That's the first part of my coordinate point, okay? Now I need to substitute in this 11. Not a whole lot of cleanness, but I'm actually going to choose equation A. So I have 2x plus 7y. 7 times y is the same as 7 times 11 equals 79. 2x plus, oh, my paper keeps creeping up. 7 times 11 is 77 equals 79. 77 is positive, so we're going to do the opposite and subtract. Okay, I'm going to write it right over here. I'm left with my 2x is equal to 79 minus 77, or 2. 2 is being multiplied by x. I'm going to do the opposite and divide. And we see that x is equal to 2 divided by 2, or 1. Okay? So my coordinate point for this system of equation is 1, 11. Okay, so now each of these problems we did slightly different from the other. Some of them we had to multiply just one equation to get it to match but opposite, right, the other. Some of them we had to multiply both. All three of these here, we had to multiply both. We really didn't have a choice. But the choice that we did make is which one we were going to multiply. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You can pick whichever one you want. If you don't want to deal with the negatives and you would have rather have multiplied this equation by 4 and this equation by 7 and work it out, you do you. I don't care. As long as you're watching your math and doing it correctly. I chose the x's and then picked a negative coefficient to multiply by to get the signs to be opposite. That's all. Um, but you should, no matter which one you choose, you should end up with the same answer. Okay? 
you just have to make sure you do your math correctly. But that's the same for everything, right? So that's lesson one. Great job. Lesson two begins on page nine, and it's called Factor by Grouping. So it says up to this point, we've been factoring trinomials, right? But not all polynomials are trinomials. This one here, this polynomial has four terms, right? But we can still factor it in this way called factor by grouping. And it says to factor a four-term polynomial into binomials, first we group the terms into pairs that contain a common variable or whose coefficients have a common factor. Um, I wish they used this one in their examples here, but they don't. But you could group it like this, okay? Because both of these have an x in common, and the coefficients both have a 2 in common, right? Then you could group these together because they don't have a variable in common, but both of these numbers do have a 3 in common. But here's another way that you could group this. It, you'd have to rewrite it, of course. Let's see, plus 8x plus 12. Okay, here's another way you could group it. You could group it like this because they both have a 5 in common and a y in common. Or you could gr and group it, these two together because they both have a 4 in common, right? Now, what we need to make sure is we have a sign here in between whether most of the time it should be a positive sign, okay? Um, because the chances of both of these being negative, so that can be a negative sign, it's pretty slim. So this is usually a positive sign in between the two because we're not multiplying at this stage, okay? We're only adding. So when we group them together, that's what it looks like. But like I said, a lot of times it can be grouped together in more than one way. And don't forget to use your positive sign to join the binomials. At this stage, we're just adding them together, okay? So let's look at this example. Grouping the binomials. When they're asking us to group, they're simply asking us to put parentheses around things. That is it. So for this case of xy plus 2x minus 3y minus 6, this is how they grouped it. They put the first two together in parentheses, and then both of these, even though I said it was fairly rare, both of these are negative, um, but they kept the negative signs in the parentheses for now and put the plus in between. Don't forget the plus in between. We're not multiplying yet, okay? Now here it says sometimes the terms in the polynomials have to be rearranged to pair the terms with like variables and coefficients, okay? So in this case, we have 24x squared minus 5y minus 20x plus 6xy. They paired it still in a way that I wouldn't have chosen. Personally, I would have rewritten it like this. I would have rewritten it as 24x squared plus 6xy as one group, plus negative 5y minus 20x. Okay, now you're thinking, well, why did you do that? Well, it's because you can, <laughs> okay? You will still get the same answer as they will get once we learn how to complete this, okay? I put these together because they're both negative and they both have a five in common. I put these together because they were both positive. They have one X in common and they have a six in common. Six goes into 24 four times. Now they grouped it a little bit different, right? They put the 24 X squared with a negative 20 X, but then I'm not pulling a coefficient out of this one because the five and the six don't have anything in common. They only have a Y in common. So that's why I put these together because I'm pulling a coefficient out of each, but like I said, in the long run, once we flip the page and see what the next step is, it won't matter because you'll get the same answer. But for now, let's take a look at these one through sixes and group them, okay? So for number one, we have 2x plus xy minus 3y minus 6. So my first group is going to be the 2x plus xy. That's my first group, plus the second group, which is my negative 3y minus 6. Okay, pretty straightforward. They have it set up correctly. 
I'm not going to do all of these with, with you because it's just the grouping part, which is pretty straightforward. But let's take a look at number three. Negative DE plus 2D minus 10 plus 5E. Okay, well, first group is going to be this negative DE for me plus 2D. Then I'm going to have a plus, and I'm going to rearrange these, and I'm going to put 5E minus 10. Okay, I'm just writing it so I have this variable first instead of a, uh, just a constant, right? I'm just switching them around. All right, but that's one way to group it. Like I said, there's more than one way to group it. So you group it how you see it, and I will make, I'll correct it. There's not just one straight up answer. Number five, 6x squared plus y squared plus 2x squared y squared plus 3. Well, let's see here. I am going to actually group the 6x squared with the 3, plus 3. Plus, and here's how I'm going to group. I'm going to put this 2x squared y squared plus y squared. I'm going to group those together. Coefficient, I can bring a constant out of here. I can't bring a constant out of here, but I can definitely bring those y squares, okay? In the long run, like I said, you're going to get the same answer. Just for clarity, let's do number 6 together. 4x squared minus 12 minus 3y squared plus x squared y squared. We can group it just how it lays, okay? 4x squared minus 12 in the first group plus negative 3y squared plus x squared y squared, okay? Sometimes it's just that simple. Just group it how it sits. You could have grouped it the other way too. It, you know, we could have grouped the 4x squared with the x squared y squared and the negatives together, negative 3y squared minus 12. That would have worked as well. Factor by grouping is pretty um, individual. You can, however you see the pairs coming together, however you see them matching up, works, okay? Let's take it, turn the page. So at the top of page 10, it says, the next step in factoring the polynomial is to factor the greatest common factor out of each pair. Now, I'm pretty sure this is the pair we looked at on the other page. Here is how they've grouped it. Now for each grouping, we need to factor out that greatest common factor. So here they have a 2x in common, but we can't forget what left behind is important, okay? So what they left behind was this 5y plus 4, right? 2, 10xy divided by 2x is 5y. 8x divided by 2x is 4. In the second pair, all they have in common is the 3, right? So 15y divided by 3 is 5. 12 divided by 3 is 4. But here's where it, it gets interesting, right? And this is the next step. It says no matter what grouping is chosen, you're going to get the same result. That's what I said when we were talking on the last page. But now they have a common factor, these two things. This is the last step, right? They both have this 5y minus 4 in common. So technically you're pulling that out, this 5y minus 4. You're pulling that out of both of these. And what's left behind is the 2x plus 3. That's how we get from adding to multiplying. You factored this polynomial, 5y minus 4, is now their greatest common factor. And when you pull it out of both, you're left with 2x plus 3. Okay? And that's how we get into the multiple. Now you factored completely. Okay? So example 3b, they've done it, but they've paired the other sets of things together. Okay? I'm not going to go through it again, but the answer is exactly the same because it does not matter what order you really put pair these together okay but it says that sometimes when factoring um, a pair of binomials will have opposite signs okay we've talked about this before you've got to factor out that negative so let's look at example four here at the top of page 11 for this one we have 6ab minus 4a plus 2 minus 3b they grouped it how it sat not that would not have been what i would have done but that's what they did so when they factored out their greatest common factors, they had 3b minus 2 and 2 minus 3b. Rather than do this in two steps, you guys know that we want our variables to be positive. So right away at this step, you should have just factored out that negative and rewrote it, okay? 
So when they factor out the negative one now, they have 3b minus 2, 3b minus 2, that's now the greatest common factor that gets factored out, and we're left with 2 minus 1 as our other binomial, okay? And there we go, factored, all right? So now they want us to factor by grouping. So first things first, I'm going to have to use scratch paper because I don't, I foresee this not being enough space. So number 7, Okay, is xy plus 2x minus 3y minus 6. All right, first is deciding how you want to group these. I'm going to group them as they sit. So I have xy plus 2x plus negative 3y minus 6. What's my greatest common factor of this first one? Well, all they really have in common is the x. So I'm going to pull the x out and it leaves me with a y plus 2. What factor do these have in common? That negative three, right? So I'm gonna pull out the negative three and that leaves me with a positive y. Negative six divided by negative three is a positive two. So now, what do these two have in common? What is their greatest common factor? It's that y plus two. y plus two, y plus two. What does that leave behind? An x minus three. Now we've completely factored it. So we have y plus 2, x minus 3. All right, number 8. 6mn minus 15m minus 14n plus 35. Okay. I am not going to group this or factor this how it lies because... I don't like the way they grouped it, okay? I don't like the way they wrote it. <laughs> so I'm going to group it like this. 6mn minus 14n, even numbers, right? Plus negative 15m plus 35. Multiples of 5, right? So I'll put those together. What is my greatest common factor here? Well, it's honestly just the two, the two and the n. They each have a two and they each have an n. What's left behind? Well, here we have a 3m left behind, right? If we multiplied it back out, 2n times 3m, I'd get 6mn. And what about over here? It's going to be a negative because I'm pulling out a positive, right? So 14 divided by 2 is 7, and then the n's are gone. So I have 3m minus 7. Here, I need my variable to be positive. So if you need to do this in two steps, you can do it in two steps. I'm going to do it all in one step. I need this to be positive, so I know I have to pull out a negative. And pull out a negative what? Well, the negative is going to be a 5. That's what they have in common is a 5. And honestly, this is a hint, right? I'm looking for a 3m. To get that, I need to divide by 5. So 3m is what's left over. And believe it or not, this is going to be a negative 7. 35 divided by a negative 5 is a negative 7. Now, what do these two have in common? 3m minus 7. What's left behind? This 2n and this minus 5. Okay? And you factored. So the factor for this, 3m minus 7, 2n minus 5. All right? Let's do number 9. 6xy plus 15x plus 4y plus 10. Okay. Again, I'm not going to group these how they lie, but I'll group it at 6xy plus 4y plus 15x plus 10. Okay. Even numbers, multiples of 5. We'll put those together in that way. That's my... That's my rationale. If you're looking at this like, why did you choose those? You could have grouped these two together because they have a three in common and these have a two in common. But like I said, you do you. I'll do it the way I do it. We will come up to the same answer. We should come up to the same answer. Okay. I'm going to slide my book up a minute here. All right. What is the greatest common factor here? Well, they have a 
two in common and they have a y in common. So when I pull that out, I'm left with a 3x for the first term. And for the second term, I'm left with a 2. 15 and 10 both have a 5 in common, no variable to speak of. So we have a 3x plus 2. Bing, bing, bing. What do these have in common? They have a 3x plus 2. What was left behind when you pull out that 3x plus 2? This 2y plus 5. Okay, boom. So 3x plus 2 times 2y plus 5. If you're ever not sure, you can FOIL method this back out and check your answer, right? Because if we multiply this back out, 3x times 2y is 6xy. 3x times 5 is 15x. 2 times 2y is 4y. And 2 times 5 is 10. Are we back to where we started? Absolutely. Okay, so that answer is correct. I'm going to turn my paper here. Let's do number 10. For number 10, we have 7y minus 3x plus xy minus 21. Let's see. I'm going to group it with like this. 7y minus 21 plus a negative 3x plus x. Why? Now, we could have put these two negatives together. Like I said, it really doesn't make a difference, okay? That's how I'm doing it for this example. So what do 7y and 20, negative 21 have in common? Well, they have 7 in common, right? And that leaves me with a y minus 3. What about here? I need this to be a... Well, actually, because this is a positive y, I need this to stay positive. So I can pull, leave that negative there. That negative isn't going to matter to me. It's my terms are written in the wrong order, right? But what do these two things in have, have in common? They only have an x in common. So that leaves me with this negative 3 plus y. Now my things are in the wrong order, right? Ooh, plus x. So I have 7 times y minus 3 plus x times, I'm just going to rewrite these, y minus 3, right? They were just in the wrong order. I just turn, wrote the y first and the negative 3 second, second. Now my terms have this y minus 3 in common. So I'm going to pull that out. And what am I left with? 7 plus x, but I like to write my variable first. So x plus 7. So for my number 10, I have y minus 3 times x plus 7. Sorry about my dogs barking at the garbage man. For number 11, I have 8rs minus 12r minus 6s plus 9. Okay, how do I want to group these together? You know what, let's just group them as they lay, right? So 8rs minus 12r plus negative 6s plus 9. Maybe you're thinking, geez, Miss Holly, you never group them the way I want to group them. <laughs> you know what, when you're doing your work, Group them how you want, right? That's the whole point of this. There really is no, well, I mean, there really is no correct way to group them. Most, nine times out of 10, it doesn't matter how you group them as long as there's something in common between your groups, right? So what is my greatest common factor here? Well, it happens to be a 4R, right? 4 goes into 8, 4 goes into 12, and they both have an R. So what's left behind here is a 2S minus 3. Okay. And then obviously I need this s to be positive because then it'll match this. So I need to pull out a negative. Well, I need to pull out a negative 3, right? They both have a 3 in common. I'm going to pull out that negative 3. That makes this 6s into a positive 2s, but makes that 9, 9 divided by negative 3 is a negative 3. Now they have this 2s minus 3 in common and what do we leave behind? 4r minus 3. Okay? 2s minus 3, 4r minus 3. All right, number 12, last one. We're going to get through all of these today for this video. I have 5mn minus 15m plus 2n minus 6. Okay? How do we want to group them? We can group them as they sit. 5mn minus 15m is going to be my first group plus 2n minus 6. 
okay? The 15 and the 5 are both multiples of 5. The 2 and the 6 are both even, so we know I have a two in, at least a 2 in common. What is my greatest common factor of these two? Well, of the coefficients, it's going to be the 5, right? And they both have an m, so that's what we're going to pull out. For this one, it leaves behind an n, and here I have negative 3, right? Fif ne negative 15m divided by 5m is going to give me a negative 3. These only have a 2 in common, so 2n divided by 2 is n. Negative 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3. Now my two terms have this n minus 3 in common. When I pull that out, I'm left with 5m plus 2. Okay, so the factor here is n minus 3 times 5m plus 2. Okay, boom, factor by grouping. Group them together so that they have a common factor of some kind. And then we pull that common factor out. The two common factors should match. We pull that one out again, and we've got our factor, our binomial factoring. Okay? That's lesson two. Lesson three begins on page 14, and it says writing a linear equation from a slope and, or sorry, from a point and a slope. So it says the equation for a line can be written if we know one of its ordered pairs and the slope using the slope internet intercept equation. You guys have seen this before. Y equals mx plus b, right? M is the slope. B is the point that we cross the y-axis. And our, our x and our y are just our coordinate point. So we substitute the x and y value from our ordered pair into this equation. And we substitute the m, the slope, to solve, then all the only variable that's left is b. Then we're solving for b. Once we find the b, we put the b in, we put the m in, but we leave the y and the x alone. We don't put that order pair in, otherwise it would just be numbers. We need to have those two variables. So what does all that mean? Let's take a look, sorry, at this example. We have the point 8, 3 and the slope of 2. So here is our slope intercept form. They substituted in the slope, then they substituted in their points, right? Y is three, X is eight. So now the only variable we have left is this B. And we solve, two times eight is 16, 16 is positive, so we subtract 16 from both sides and B ends up being negative 13. Now to write the equation, because that is the what they're asking for, that's what they want, we put the negative 13 for our b, and we just write y equals the slope, which is 2, times x minus 13. So the y and the x stay for the equation, because that's how equations look. We just substitute in the slope and the b. Okay? So over here, example 2. This time our slope is a fraction, but that's okay. Here is our here are, is our point. So we substitute it all in. The y is negative seven. The slope, the m, is negative three fourths. The x was negative two, and we don't know the b. That's what we're trying to solve for, right? So we multiply it out, subtract our fraction from both sides, and we see that our b is still a fraction, and that's okay. So our final equation is y equals the slope, which was negative 3 fourths, times x, minus, or plus, but our b happens to be a negative, so plus negative 17 over 2. So that equation is not pretty, but that's still the equation of the line. So let's do some of these um, and see how this works. So our slope is 3, our point is 4 thirds, y equals mx plus b is our slope intercept equation. So y is 3, and that's going to equal m, which is 3, times our x, which is 4, plus b. Okay? Boom. We substituted everything we know. We only have one variable left, so we solve. 3 equals 12 plus b. 12 is positive, so we're going to do the opposite and subtract it from both sides. And we see that b is equal to 3 minus 12, or negative 9. 
Now, we write y equals the slope, which is 3 times x, then we put our b, minus 9. Boom, we're done. Okay, let's look at number 2. y is 5. Okay, that's going to be equal to m, which is a negative 4, times x, which is a negative 6, plus b. We don't know b yet. That's what we're trying to solve for. So 5 equals negative 4 times negative 6 is 24, plus b. 24 is positive now, because a negative times negative is positive. But So we have to do the opposite and subtract it from both sides. And we get that b is equal to 5 minus 24, or a negative 19. Now we write our equation y equals m, which we know is negative 4, times x, and then we write our b, which is negative 19. So it seems like a lot of steps, like over here on this page, it's got a review of the steps. It seems like a lot of steps, but really they just kind of fall together. Number 3, y is negative 3, equals m, which is 1 half, times x, which is 1, plus b, okay? Negative 3 equals 1 half plus b. 1 half is positive, so we want to do the opposite and subtract it from both sides. Now, do not write negative 3 and a half. That's not going to work for these types of equations. We actually have to subtract these. And to subtract a fraction from a whole number, we have to make our whole number into a fraction, right? Right now, this is 3 over 1. To get it to be over 2, we have to multiply it by 2, so it becomes 6 over 2 right? Negative, because we have a negative 3. So now we have a negative 6 over 2 minus 1 over 2 gives me a negative 7 over 2. Now we write our equation. y equals m, which is our slope, 1 half x, and then we put our b, minus 7 halves. Okay, good job. Let's take a look at the next one. So again, here's our form. Our y equals 1. Okay, so 1 equals m, which is 1 third, times our x, which is negative 6, plus b. We can reduce here because 3 goes into 3 one time, and it goes into 6 twice. Do not forget that negative sign. So 1 now equals 1 times a negative 2, which is negative 2, plus b. This 2 is negative. We're going to do the opposite and add it to both sides. So b is equal to 1 plus 2, or 3. Now we write our equation. y equals m, which is 1 third, times x, add our b, stick our b on, plus 3. Okay? Boom. Number 5. y, which is negative 4, equals m, which is negative 2 thirds, times x, which is 9, plus b. y equals mx plus b. We can reduce here. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 9 three times. So negative 4 is equal to negative 2 times 3, which is a negative 6, plus b. 6 is a negative, so we're going to do the opposite and add 6 to both sides. And we end up with b is equal to negative 4 plus 6, which is a 2. So y equals m, negative 2 thirds, times x. Stick our b, which is a plus 2. Last one. y is 2 thirds equals our m, our slope, which is oh, 1 sixth. I hate when I write over it. 1 sixth. Okay. Times x, which is 0 plus b. 0 times 1 sixth is what? It's 0, right? That one's gone. So 2 thirds equals b. Boom. That one was pretty straight up. So y is equal to m one sixth times x, and we stick our b on there, which is a positive two thirds. Sometimes our b is a fraction, sometimes it's a whole number. We just substitute in. We substitute everything that we know, and we know all of this. We just don't know our b. We solve for our b, and then you write the equation. Write the equation. Please make sure you're reading the directions. Some of you are writing down what I don't, what I'm not looking for, okay, what the, what they're not asking for. So please read your directions, all right? Great job on lesson three. Lesson four begins on page 19, and it's titled Dividing Rational Expressions. Now, 
When we divide rational expressions, we follow the rules for dividing fractions. You have to invert the second rational expression to form its reciprocal and then multiply, right? We cannot divide a fraction by a fraction, right? That's This would be this, 3y to the fifth over 16x to the seventh over 9y squared over 4x. Can we divide a fraction by a fraction? No, we have to take this one, the second one, the bottom, right, the denominator, and we have to flip it, okay? So that's what they did here. They flipped it. They flipped the reciprocal. Then they reduced all over the place like we know how to do, and they came up with their final answer, okay? Sometimes the rational expression has polynomials, and we have to factor them. Stuff we've been doing already, right? So flip it, okay? Here's what they did. They took the reciprocal, then they factored it, and then they canceled, all right? The last note here at the bottom says that um, if there's a polynomial, okay, if you're dividing by this, it's the same as that over one, and you have to flip it so it's one over. So if this isn't already a fraction, but you are, you know, making it, you're dividing and need a reciprocal, then you flip it like that, okay? And I believe if we turn the page, you'll see what context that works in. So let's turn the page. So this is what the problem, so basically this would be 5x plus 20, oh, 20 over 6 divided by x squared plus x minus 12. So even though this is a fraction and this isn't, because this is a fraction, we have to make this into a fraction. And when we do that, we take the reciprocal, it ends up looking like this. Okay, so remember when I talked about um, seeming like there wasn't anything in the numerator, we can't just leave it blank. Okay, we've got to put that one up there. All right, so let's just take a look at some of these um, together here. There's a whole bunch of them to work on. Let's take a look. 5m squared n to the third over 2 divided by 3m n to the fourth over 4. So I'm going to rewrite it. 5m squared n to the third over two times I'm take so the first stays the same the second one we flip over four over three m n to the fourth okay let's reduce these right two goes into two one time two goes into four two times I'm gonna circle it I can't reduce the coefficient three and five they don't have anything in common but these variables do I have a 2m squared here and an m here. This m is going to come up. It crosses the line and changes a sign. So I have m to the 2 minus 1 or m to the 1 power, basically. So I'm just going to scratch out that 2. So if right now I've got this and this. This n to the 3rd is smaller than this n to the 4th. This one's gone. This m was gone. So I'm going to bring it down. Okay, so it's going to disappear. When it crosses the line, it changes its sign. So I have n to the 4 minus 3, or just an n. So I can scribble that out and circle here. So what's left in my numerator? 5m times 2, stinking me. So 5 times 2 is 10. So 10m over 1 times 3 times n, or 3n. Okay, 10m over 3 n. Okay, look at number two. 4 x to the third y over 3 divided by 2x squared y squared over 5. We're going to take the reciprocal of that part, so it goes 5 over 2x squared y squared. Okay, I can't reduce the 5 and the 3, so they are just going to stay, but I can reduce this 2 and this 4. Okay, now, x to the third is bigger than x squared, so this one's going to come up, so it goes away from the denominator, and then I have x to the 3 minus 2. It crosses the line, it changes its sign. 3 minus 2, or just an x, right? So I'm going to scribble out that 3 and just circle my x. I have y here, but I have a y squared here, so this one's going to go down, and it crosses the line and changes its sign. So I have y to the 2 minus 1, which just equals y. So I can cross that 2 out and just circle my y. 
So now I have two times x times five, which is 10x, and I have three times y in the denominator, so three y. Okay, let's look at number three. I have three x minus six over four y divided by x minus two over y squared plus y. I need to factor out this numerator of the first term. They have a three in common. So it ends up with a three times x minus two, right? Over four y. Times, now I need to do the reciprocal, right? So I'm gonna start with the denominator because I need to factor that. And I can factor out a y and that's gonna leave me with a y plus one. And then that's gonna be over x minus two, okay? Now, I have x minus 2 here and an x minus 2 here. They can cancel. I have a y here and a y here. They can cancel. y over y is 1. So what am I left with? I'm left with 3 times y plus 1 in the numerator all over 4. 4 is the only thing left in the denominator. All right? Good job. For number 4, I can factor this numerator. I'm not going to read off the whole thing. They've already factored some of it for us, which is pretty sweet. But I can factor this numerator, right? They both have a three in common and they both have a y in common. So what does that leave behind? Well, it leaves an x plus, I'm factoring all of that out. So it's an x plus one over eight times, taking the reciprocal, four over six y times x plus one, all right? x plus 1, x plus 1. y, y. 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 6 two times. Okay? 4 goes into 4 one time, 4 goes into 8 two times. So in my numerator, I have nothing but 1s. Do not forget the 1, though. It still belongs there. The denominator, I have 2 times 2, or 4. So my answer is 1 over 4. All right? Number five, I have x minus one, and I'm gonna put that over one, okay? Just like in that example up here, right? Divided by the quantity x squared minus one. Well, we know it's gonna be times the reciprocal, which tells me there's gonna be a one in the numerator, because I don't have a fraction here yet. But this can factor, right? This can factor out. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. This is a sum and difference binomial. So it's x plus one times x minus one. Sum and difference binomial. Okay, we've got to get good at recognizing those. Then we have an x minus one that we can cancel here and here. In the numerator, all that I'm left with then is a one. In the denominator, I have an x plus one. Okay, these are a little complicated, a little bit quick at the same time. Number six, I can factor this. This is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. It is a perfect square binomial. It factors to x plus three, or sorry, not perfect square, sum and difference binomial. x plus three, x minus three over three x times, remember we're flipping and taking the reciprocal, 12 x squared now is in the numerator and x plus three is in the denominator. All right, my x plus threes can cancel. Three goes into three once, three goes into 12 four times. X here is posit is smaller than this x squared that's here, so it's gonna move up. And this becomes, it crosses the line and changes its sign, so I have an x to the two minus one, or just an x now. So I can scratch that off and just circle my x. So what's left in my numerator? Well, I have a four x times x minus three, you do not need to multiply that back out. And in my denominator, all I have is a one, so it's just over one, but basically it's just a four x to x minus three. Any number over one is just that number, right? All right, last two, these have a lot more factoring. Let me slide my book up here so they fit. A lot more factoring in here, right? Looking at the first term, we need to factor x squared is a perfect square, but 12 is not. So I know I can split up my x's. 12 is negative. That tells me I have to have a negative and a positive. My middle term is negative, so my larger 
factor is going to be the negative. So what multiplied together gives me 12, but subtracted will give me a negative 4. That's a negative 6 and a positive 2, right? The bottom polynomial, x squared is a perfect square, but 6 is not, so I know I can split up my x's. 6 is positive, but my middle term is negative. That tells me both of these are negative. So what factors of multiply together to give me 6, but basically add together to give me 5? That's going to be 3 and 2, right? Negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is a negative 5. All right, now we're multiplying it by the reciprocal. So I like to do it like this so I don't lose track of where I am at. My numerator now is going to be this denominator, which needs to be factored. X is a perfect square. 6 is not. 6 is negative. That tells me I have a positive and a negative. So what factors of 6 multiply together give you 6, but subtract to give you a negative 1? Well, that's going to be a negative 3 and a positive 2, right? Now my denominator is this up here. X is a perfect square, but 12 is not. 12 is positive, but my middle term is negative. So this is negative and this is negative. And what factors of 12 basically added together give me an 8? Well, that's going to be a 6 and a 2, right? Negative 6 times negative 2 is a positive 12. Negative 6 plus a negative 2 is a negative 8. All right. Oof. We factored everything. Now, can we cancel? Well, I got an x minus 6 here and an x minus 6 here. I have an x minus 3 in the denominator and an x minus 3 in the numerator. But other than that, I can't cancel anything else. So it leaves me with an x plus 2 times x plus 2 over an x minus 2 times an x minus 2. And the correct way to write that, because this is the same thing, multiply by itself, so it's an x plus 2 squared over the same two things multiplied by themselves, so an x minus 2 squared. That is the correct way to write that answer. Okay, that was a huge one. Great job. Let's do number eight. For number eight, factoring the numerator of our first term, the x is a perfect square, but 12 is not. I think we've done every version of 12 thinkable here. Um, 12 is negative, so I know I'm going to have a negative and a positive. So what factors of 12 multiply together give me a negative, or give me a 12, but subtracted give me a positive 1? Well, that's going to be a negative 2. and a, No, it's not. It's silly me. Not a 2 and a 6, right? It's going to be a 3 and a 4. So a negative 3 and a positive 4. Right? So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 plus 4 is a positive 1. All right? And that's over 5. Times, now we're going to flip this one over. So 15 now goes in the numerator. But we need to factor now what will be our denominator. X is a perfect square, but 8 is not. So 8 is negative, which tells me I have a negative and a positive. My middle term is positive, so my larger factor is going to be the positive. So what factors of 8 multiplied together are going to give me a 2x? A po when you add them, we'll give you a 2x. Well, it's going to be a positive 4, right, and a negative 2. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 2 plus 4 is a positive 2. All right, now we can reduce. I have this x plus 4 in the numerator and this x plus 4 in the denominator. 5 goes into 5 one time and 15 three times, but that's all that I can reduce. So I'm left with 3 times x minus 3 all over x minus 2. Okay, so when we factor these, Again, this is all just building, right? We've just been learning one step over the other. We've added division, but all that does is multiply by the reciprocal, and then we reduce like we've been reducing. You guys have been doing a great job on this. Keep it up. That's lesson four. Again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me, whether it's in the homework, a quiz, or a test. I'm happy to help you work through it. So you can contact me via text or in my office hours. Otherwise... Until next time.